What's up, y'all? Uh, Trucker X here. Uh, here to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Sonic Nazo Unleashed. Today, August 14th, marks the 10th year uh, ever since I submitted um, Sonic Nazo Unleashed Part 1 on Newgrounds.com. Uh, ever since then, between all the parts uh, uploaded to Newgrounds and the parts on YouTube, all the combination parts, it's, over, it's like over 35 million views, and I think all of you guys so much for supporting my little Sonic fan fiction over these past 10 years. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about uh, the backstory on how Nazo Unleashed came to be. And at the end of it, I will show you a secret little um, power that Nazo gets in the Wrath of Nazo. So you know, stay tuned for that. Ever since I was uh, little, I loved uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, Mario too, but at the, for some reason, I always resonated with Sonic more. Uh, we, I grew up having a, a Genesis and playing that more the, uh, than the NES with my brother. Sonic 2 was my very first Sonic game. Uh, then I went on to Sonic 3, so Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, fun fact, I never really found Sonic 1 to be that fun. Please don't hate me for that. I remember my mom, would, I guess she figured out uh, some way to uh, enter in uh, a cheat code to, in Sonic 2 to enable debug mode. Um, and that allowed me to transform into Super Sonic once I collected enough rings. And this, that was the craziest thing for me. Like, I could, Sonic was already fast, but you could go so fast in, as Super Sonic that the camera couldn't even keep up with your speed. And that was awesome for me at the time. That feeling would have a, a, a renaissance when I started getting into uh, Dragon Ball Z around sixth grade. Um, because I fell off of Sonic after Sonic 3D Blast, because I never had a Sega Saturn, and I, I really didn't have a Dreamcast until I had a, until like the end of its life cycle, pretty much. So Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 uh, were lost on me until I got a GameCube. Me and my brother were playing a lot of old school games. We had bought Sonic and Knuckles because I never actually owned Sonic and Knuckles. And when we figured out you could connect Sonic 3 and uh, Sonic and Knuckles together, that's when I found out about Hyper Sonic. Uh, and that there was a special uh, new form only available in um, you know, in that game. So coupled, you know, with Sonic's new forms and my you know growing interest in Dragon Ball Z, I started drawing Sonic, you know, uh, fighting people all the time, going supersonic, going hypersonic, fighting with Shadow. Uh, but drawing was never enough. You know, um, I wanted to make them um, do more than that, and I didn't know how. And so uh, I started going on Newrounds.com around, I guess, the age of uh, 11. I remember seeing a flash called Mario vs. Sonic by the late Randy Solom. And at the time, it was huge for me because he was taking the actual, like, sprites from the video games and making them fight each other. Um, and that was crazy to me. I'm like, you can, you can make your wildest, like, fantasy fights happen just with software. And at the time, I didn't know how to use Flash or know how to acquire it. So um, my mom had bought me, my 11-year-old self, she bought me a Swish 2.0. And I made some really, really uh, crude sprite animations with it. The very first one I, I ever made was called Sonic vs. Frieza. Um, again, this was during my Dragon Ball Z Sonic hype phase, uh, obsession phase in uh, sixth grade. And I had uh, Frieza shoot tails and Sonic go supersonic and you know fight him and all that. Uh, and then once I figured out how to make a you know full self-contained film for Newgrounds, I made my very first one for Newgrounds called Sonic Budokai. And that's where I first used my idea of Shattuck. Uh Me and my brother uh, came up with like I guess this little recolor of. Uh, Sonic and Shadow uh, in sprite form and I know like we probably weren't the first ones to come up with the idea of a fusion between Sonic and Shadow I'm pretty sure that's not the most original idea out there on the internet um, But I think we were I was probably like the first one to uh, Use it in, in an animated format. Maybe I don't know eventually I would you know make other sprite uh, movies throughout time and and so I eventually saw a cartoon by Jeff Yandora called uh, Sonic X Chaotic Battle and it was a hand-drawn Sonic animation uh, with Sonic fighting Shadow, and it blew my mind. And I, I remember watching it over and over again because uh, yeah, Sonic and Shadow fighting with like you know uh, their super forms, their hyper forms. It went along to Guilty Gear music. It was awesome. And at that point, I was like, yo, I have to, I have to draw my next Sonic film. I can't just use sprites forever. And a friend of mine gave me Flash and. 
uh, I got a, uh, a very small uh, Wacom Graphire drawing tablet, and I started working on my very first uh, Sonic film called uh, A Super Sonic Quest. And it was around this time that I think Sonic X was coming out in Japan, and I remember seeing this uh, mysterious image of this blue hedgehog, and the only thing people knew about him was that the file name of the image was nazo.jpg. And nazo in Japanese just means mystery, uh, but the internet went wild with it at the time. Some people thought it was hypersonic, some people thought it was a new character, a new villain, uh, or dark sonic. Um, of course, now we know that it was just a scrap supersonic design from Sonic X uh, until they decided to just stick with his gold design. So Nazo, Nazo's design is supposed to be supersonic, but uh, I ran at the time I ran with it as a what if villain. So the thing was, I just jumped right into animating it. I didn't, I didn't really know how to use Flash or the brush tool or the eraser tool. I just started drawing in it, and it was very crude at first because uh, whatever little animation knowledge I knew um, was very inefficient and very ugly looking, which is why I would eventually go back and redraw the scenes of Super Sonic Quest make the first scene of the power of Nazo. And that was the new name I was going by. It was the power of Nazo instead. And this is where uh, uh, Hyper Shattuck came back, ever, all, all, all the way back from Sonic Budokai. Uh, he looks very similar to my Nazo Unleashed Shattuck, just instead of being like a, like a, a silver blue, he's more so like a pale yellow. Uh, and Nazo's su super form, I think I just called it Super Nazo, is a minty green, wild, super sane, two hair, spiky chest, a hedgehog. My 14 year old character design skills weren't up to snuff. I mean, look at his shoes. Eventually after that, I was gonna move on and do other Sonic shorts until I found uh, a archive of Sonic uh, voice clips from Sonic Heroes and Sonic Adventure. And there were, there were thousands of them. And I was like, yo, I can, Go back, splice in some of these voices uh, in what certain scenes so of uh, the power of Nazo, and actually have the characters talk to each other. But I was just gonna, you know, maybe re-upload it as a special edition uh, with just some voices. Um, and when I started doing that, I noticed I had to, I had to draw flapping mouths, so I would just redraw the characters, and because I was getting better at drawing, and I started using the pencil tool instead to get a, a cleaner line. One new drawing turned into another new drawing, and I didn't like how. This, uh, this scene went, or how this fight scene went. So I decided, okay, let me just change the fight scene of uh, Sonic and Shadow uh, fighting Nazo. And as I continued to animate, I was like, well, at this point, I might as well just redo the entire film. Uh, and this is why, if you look at Nazo Unleashed, the uh, lowest quality of uh, drawings is in the center, right before Shadow starts fighting Nazo. And that's because I started with the center of the film, then I went to the beginning of the film, uh, work my way down to Super Sonic's uh, battle with Nozzle, which is why Super Sonic's battle looks better than Super Shadow's battle. And once that uh, part one and part two was, were done, uh, I decided to, to tackle uh, part three. Originally going to just use Espio's voice from Sonic Heroes uh, for Nozzle to have a voice because he had a very dark, gruffy voice, but one, Espio didn't have that many lines, and two, I realized it, it would just be silly to have uh, Espio's voice uh, be Nazo. Chaos Emerald captured. Is he invincible? That's when I discovered Omadon uh, through the series uh, Shin on Newgrounds. He had a very uh, intelligent, calculated way of talking, uh, and he reminded me of Perfect Cell, which is which, which, which was great because I modeled Nazo's personality at the time off of Perfect Cell, and when he agreed to do lines for the film, I was like, great, I have all the voices that I need. When it came time to make part three, it was around this time that I was getting into animation more seriously. Uh, I was applying to colleges uh, for animation. You can see in certain parts of uh, part three of Nazo Unleashed, me trying to, uh, to use animation principles such as follow through, secondary action, overshooting, you know, trying to push my animation even further for the uh, final part. The downside was, I, uh, after the credits, I had placed an Easter egg of Eggman finding a Perfect Nozzle's golden cuff. I had him do that in case later down the line, um, I wanted to make a sequel to Nozzle Unleashed. Maybe when I was a better animator, when I had more time, because uh, I was plan planning to go to college, and I was 
done with uh, you know my Sonic fan film. But I owe both Newgrounds, Sonic, and my Nods and Unleashed fans a lot because that's what got me into animation more seriously. If you're a new animator um, and you're trying to build an audience, YouTube's great if you have you know, little tests you want to upload, or if you have a, like I was lucky to have a following already, so I was able to get YouTube views pretty quick. But if you're new, definitely upload your stuff to Newgrounds.com because it's, uh, it, it's curated content. Like, people, like humans, go in and they find uh, good stuff to put on the front page. Maybe you made a, a funny short and you're now on the front page of Newgrounds. Maybe it was a really well animated short and you're also on the top daily five of the day. It's a lot easier to get views uh, and criticism uh, and feedback uh, on Newgrounds than is on YouTube just because of the way they present their artists. And I also encourage everybody to uh, draw from life if possible. One of the advantages of me going into college was that I knew Flash, I knew software very easily because of you know stuff I made for Newgrounds, but because I spent most of my time making either hedgehogs or uh, like anime OCs, uh, I wasn't really good at classical drawing, so drawing like realistic humans from a certain angle or drawing environments was hard for me. And I was like, I I think I, f I felt like I was more so below average in certain classes, or uh, or I had more to learn than others because of this drawback of mine, um, especially in character design. So I encourage all of you who want to get into either storyboarding or illustration or animation seriously. Uh, I encourage you to practice drawing things outside of your, I guess, what you're used to. Uh, draw from life, draw, uh, practice anatomy, draw environments, draw objects, draw animals, you know. You're eventually going to have to draw those um, subjects, uh, either in a school sense or in a professional sense. And if you find out that you can't draw that kind of stuff that well, um, that weakness is going to be your hindrance. Uh, probably, I should probably take my own advice as well and that's where you know and, and that's where you find me today you know uh, it's a long process you know because my animation standards and level of work uh, have increased tenfold since I was in high school uh, my free time has decreased since high school so the entire process is taking a lot longer than it did before but I'm loving what I'm uh, what I've made so far I've loved the feedback that I've gotten so far from you guys, I'm really excited to get uh, the film uh, complete as a whole. Uh, I am going to split it into three parts. That way uh, I can get uh, the film, uh, parts of the film to you sooner. And that way if something comes up between now and 2019, at least part one or part two can be done before that. So that way I can take my time with part three if need be and not be locked down to 2019. Again, I think a lot of you for being uh, patient with uh, the Wrath of Nazo, again, this is going to take a, a long time to complete, and I think splitting it into three parts will be the best the, the best solution. I have some really awesome scenes uh, storyboarded uh, for Act One. Um, I'm already in the the middle of Act Two. Uh, the, the voice lines that I've received from my voice actors have been fantastic, and I really cannot wait to get anything to you guys uh, soon. So thanks for being with me on this. Sonic fan fiction craziness journey with me for the past 10 years. Uh, thanks for continuing. Okay, that's enough out of you. I think it's time for the world to get a taste of the new me. And this, this is only the beginning. <laughs>